Hello, um, our Wisconsin Revolution. My name is Andrew McKinney, and I am running for District 16 State Senate seat as a Democrat. And um, I hope to do well here at this interview and hopefully uh, be endorsed by you. Um, and looking forward to August primary and hopefully to November 3rd. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, my name is Peter German. Uh, he, him, his. I'm uh, the co-chair of the uh, Dan County chapter of our Wisconsin Revolution. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Greg, you want to quick introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I'm uh, Greg Javosky. I'm the uh, secretary of the Dane County chapter of our Wisconsin Revolution. Oh, just to um, clarify, the, the endorsement today will be for the um, the Dane County chapter of, of OWR. Is, is okay. What we're doing. Is it, uh, I mean, I that. Um, so thanks a lot. Uh, Peter, do you want to start off with the, uh, the question? Absolutely. Oh, another thing I've been, the other thing I've been doing is um, there's a chat feature in Zoom. Um, I've been trying to post the uh, questions as they come up, just in case you have to review them. Um, hopefully it'll be quick enough if, if you want to look at those. Yeah. All right, All right. Uh, number one. Uh, so uh, do you support uh, publicly funded elections? Uh, then why or why not? Uh, yes, I do. That's a good question. I do. And um, what this does, it gives a fair opportunity um, to campaign without special interest getting involved. Here I am a, um, a new, this is a, this is a new thing for me. Um, this is bigger than running for school board, obviously. And I know that there's a lot of special interests out there. Uh, I know that, um, before two, 2011, uh, this rule was in place for uh, this, th this type of um, funding. Scott Walker ended it in 2011, followed by some other states as well to have unlimited funds, which makes it an unfair advantage to candidates like myself. Uh, I try, I'm trying my best to run a nice clean campaign uh, I'm trying to uh, get donations from the people uh, that believe in me. And I think that every candidate uh, can go against a career politician because they have, uh, they, they have ideas and, 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 and they want to, um, you know, support their state and their district. And they just want to have a fair opportunity. So I think Yes, I definitely would like to see that happen again. Thanks. Uh, the next one, do you favor extending the time frame to vote at the polls during elections to a minimum of two weeks ahead of the election date? Absolutely. With this pandemic that's going on, everyone uh, ha deserves an opportunity to vote. Uh, no one should uh, be slated for that. Um, we have fought since the civil rights as a black man. Uh, there was a time when women could not vote. Everyone deserves a vote here in the United States. You are born and raised here. If you come from another country and you do the proper paperwork to be a citizen, it is your right to vote. That's just the bottom line for me. So absolutely. Thank you. Um, so what model or plan uh, would you prefer for uh, redistricting as far as a uh, combating uh, gerrymandering? Uh, it, that, that's a great question. Um, you know, I'm a transparent person. Um, I do support the transparent and nonpartisan districting process. Gerrymandering isn't a problem of one party. It's a partisan that cleans the power that damages the will of other voters and erodes our democracy right now. Voters should be able to pick their elected officials, not the other way around. With our current system in Wisconsin, politicians draw to their own district lines. However, I would like, as a senator, I would like to come together to get all the senators together to make one process that's equal for both sides 
and stay with that forever. It should not be changing every time a party flips. You know, that's, that, that does not work for the people. The people vote us in as a public service and it should be equal and drawn out straight down the middle to have everyone to have that opportunity to vote. So I would like to work both party lines in order to get this done, to keep it in policy that should never be broken again. It should be right, it should be fair. And that's my take on that. What are your top three legislative priorities and what will you do to move them through the legislature? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. You got the top three. I actually have seven, but <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> because there's a lot of work to do. The, the reason why I, my campaign basically says for education, for veterans, for community together. So those will be your top three. Within that top three, you have in each of these categories, what is hindering healthcare is hindering us right now. We need to expand on healthcare to take care of all of our people here in the United States. There shouldn't be no issues with that. However, that has been a huge problem and we have a lot of low income areas, a lot of poverty neighborhoods that are, and a lot of seniors, veterans like myself, not getting the proper care. So that's one. Racial disparities. We are ranked number one. Wisconsin's ranked number one. I don't know how that happened, okay? We should not be number one. My mother is a single parent that moved me from Gary, Indiana, where I was born, where I was raised, impoverished, polluted area, to move here for a cleaner, star fresh area. This was, Madison was a place, the greatest place to live in the United States for like three years. And now to be racial disparity, redlining, not given opportunities to pe a, lot, a lot of people of color. But what, what happened? And so this is why I run those three parts. So when you say the three priorities for education, for veterans, for community, it filters in a lot of other things. That's why I have like seven. So I want to stick with those three, add in everything that falls up under it to make things better. And so here I can say um, under community, I want to improve the mental health and homelessness for low income and single parent homes and homeless veterans. I was a homeless veteran. So I know living in the streets, what needs to happen, what needs to be done. Um, fighting for fair housing rights. That's another thing on the community and veterans. Not getting that, you know, we're not getting that, the opportunity to be in good homes. The, uh, the injustice in the system, the justice systems for all the citizens, we, we need that. Um, also, um, in my community and also that goes into education, you know, our environment policies, you know, we need, we, we can't have uh, tainted water and we can't have all this pollution and everything. We, we're better than this. We, we are a rich country and we need to do better. And I don't believe the policies right now uh, are helping our community and the state right now. So this is what I want to do. Uh, as a senator, to get in there, to work with other senators, to get things done. Awesome, thank you. Um, uh, so obviously, uh, a lot of people are hurting right now, uh, but in the emergence uh, from this pandemic, uh, would you support state level economic hardship payments? Or would you support those going directly to uh, residents? Uh, and uh, what would you think are the uh, top components that you believe would be in uh, a bill like that? You know, <laughs> when I was in the military, August 1st, 1990, 
was a pandemic in itself for the military when we went to the Gulf War. No one was prepared. No one was ready for this. All soldiers, uh, military folks was in the military for educational, you know, they wanted the educational benefits to have a, a better future. This state and any, every other state was not prepared for anything like this. So what Governor Evers and his staff has done to me has been remarkable. And how do we build on that? Because I don't care what other people out there say that he's not doing this and that. You, no one here in this state has ever been in a pandemic, not like this. So whatever you've done, positive, and it has been positive, we got to keep building on it. We can't, at this time, downplay anything. We need to help people um, to pay their rent, their light, food, all of this stuff. I am all for trying to find money, federal and state level, to keep our state functioning until we can get COVID-19 down to a minimum and we can get back into now a new normal. It is not going to, we're not going back to the normal way anymore. This COVID-19 has opened up new doors and we are now learning different options on how to do education, how to work, um, um, housing, all kinds of stuff. So I am fully aware um, what needs to do and I am going to support. And it doesn't make a difference who the governor is, I am going to support because we work for the people again. We are elected officials and we work for the people. And that is, a, and that's our, that's our job and that's our duty to make Wisconsin better. How will you guarantee housing to citizens? How will you deal with the financial situation of those facing eviction because of the pandemic? And what specific solutions would you propose? Again, with this pandemic is brand new. Um, we should have had policies that's working for homelessness in the first place. I know that we have our two parties right now are so divided that they do not want to come to the table and actually sit down and hash out problems for, you know, for the people. It's basically my way or the highway. That's not how it's supposed to work. We're supposed to come together to work on these types of issues. Um, so for me, looking at the whole scenario, coming together as senators and assembly to make policies to get the funding to do all of what we need to do for our community. And like you say, to, to guarantee the housing, people should not be homeless at this time. We have to protect our, we have to protect the people in our state by any means necessary. I know it's difficult, but I think that we should be able to come up with it, with money and not just throw it at the issues, but come up with solutions. Um, I don't have one per se on my brain right now, but to listen to all of the constituents that I voted in, we can come up with a lot of great solutions um, to help out all of our Wisconsinites in this situation. Thank you. Um, uh, so will you fight for a, a single payer health care system at the uh, state level? And uh, would you support uh, a federal single payer health care system? That's a good question. Yes and yes. And the reason I would do that is because it's something like even Bernie Sanders have been fighting for. Universal health care. We, again, we are a rich country. Why are people not able to afford health care. Everyone deserves that. Everyone should be covered. It, the population will be healthier. Uh, businesses will be better. Uh, reduced, you know, our re per capita spending will be reduced. Now, we know that there's gonna be some cons to it, but I believe that 
as senators and assembly, and even with the governor, we should be able to find ways where there won't be no huge tax hikes because, you know, big companies don't want to be, you know, paying taxes. They have to compromise. And that's one thing that people, you know, in the Senate and, and assembly, and even when I'm in the school board, we have to learn how to compromise and come up with great deals and negotiate to be, to come up with the great outcome for people. Um, we need to, um, it, we know that it could reduce the uh, government funding, but the government can come up with money. It, it's been proven. With this pandemic, we are supposed to be trillions of dollars in the hole, but they were able to come up with funds to try to relieve people in America. So we know that the government can do what they need to do. Um, the biggest thing is that con of it is that we're a capitalist country and that would take out the competition and it shouldn't be a competition. We're people, we need it. All these companies should come together and compromise and say, okay, I'm not gonna try to make more money than you because we are thinking about the health and the, he the health care of people. And this is what poverty capitalism hurts us the most. I believe that if big companies with the state senators across the United States can come up with some solutions and programs, I think that it would be better for us and we can all be covered and we should be able to have a great healthcare system at the state level and at um, the federal level. Will you help pass workers' rights laws, helping those who are forced to return to work, but who risk infection from COVID-19? Absent the equivalent of a single payer system, will you push the state to guarantee medical coverage through Badger Care uh, for those affected in this way? That's a great question, and yes, I would. Um, again, it, we, we are in some difficult times here. And we have to try to do things safely and responsible. And we, I know that the reopening has now taken a backfall to it because there has been a lot of irresponsibility going on. I believe that if people will use the common sense, use the mask at the, at the time when they are supposed to use it, I believe that we can reopen this state safely I think that everybody can get back to work. Um, I believe that we as a state should come up with some funds, uh, even like you say, through Badger Care and to help out our, our uh, people that vote us in. And I am truly aware that um, one day COVID-19 will end and we can get back again the way we're supposed to. But for now, I do believe that we need to pass some rights to help everyone that is affected with this. Awesome. Um, so the next question is a little bit like a lightning round. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we'll list off like a, um, about 10 policies and you can indicate uh, whether you support or uh, don't support them. Uh, if you want, you can offer a little bit of uh, reasoning, but um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, so starting, uh, do you support the propositions outlined in that campaign zero, which includes uh, ending broken windows policing? Yes, I do. And, uh, uh, and matter of fact, looking at your campaign zero and reading through everything, everything is a yes for me. Awesome. <laughs> Just to let you know, um, it, I think it's a safe measure, uh, especially with the body cams and filming the police. As a black man, I know white America was not, uh, I have to thank COVID-19 for this. I hate, I didn't want to say it like that, but it really woke up America. This, the George Floyd thing seemed like it was brand new to white people. 
I have been living with this fear for years. And it has come out to the forefront. Um, we, I don't know why is that this is a public service as a police officer to protect and serve. That's what is to protect and to serve. Just like I did in the military to protect and serve for this country. It is not to empower and enslave. And I feel really bad for great cops out there that they have to almost stick with a code that they would not tell or as they say, snitch on their brother and sisters in the police force. There has to be common sense and heart. When you see something's going wrong, get in there and take care of it. It should not be a forceful brutality. All this that need to, it, it has to stop. And I'm glad that the community is out that films all this stuff. We need to weed out the bad, keep the good in, and, and, and we keep moving on. And I know that we're going to have some questions <laughs> following with this. So I'm going to stop there and then I answer the other ones that comes up. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move on to there. We have some more questions on, uh, on policing and criminal justice. Um, the next one's a, a multiple choice with four possible uh, answers that we asked for. Um, questions, I will blank funding for the police. I, you say I will support increasing funding for the police, leveling funding for the police, decreasing funding for the police, or eliminating funding for the police. I am going to add one for you. Number five, <laughs> this is called reallocating funds. And what I mean by this is, growing up in Gary, we used to have a person, a police officer called, and his nickname was Officer Friendly. Officer Friendly would come to the um, elementary and the middle schools to talk about policing, pr police procedures, uh, talk about um, what happens when you do something bad, uh, giving us those warning signals of, you know, stranger danger and all like that. Also, we had what was called from the 80s movie of uh, Police Academy. We had citizens on patrol. So we were able to assist police officers in seeing things that was happening in our neighborhood. That's not going on right now. So with funds, I believe that if you give the community a little power to help protect their neighborhoods, and to work hand in hand with police officers, I think it would come out to be a lot better. I don't want to decrease. I don't want to defund. I want to reallocate. We have mental health issues within a community and with some police officers that need this as well. So that would be my answer. I know it's not the four that you are looking for. Okay. As our, uh, our our voters will our voters will look at it. Okay. And, um, <laughs> a, 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 next next part is actually a couple more parts. Um, a police okay. officer in your jurisdiction, and this could be your uh, uh, Senate district, has been filmed killing someone they have stopped or arrested. How do you respond? I respond that that police officer, like any citizen, should be arrested and then is guilty until proven innocent until you find out why all of this happened. We, I, I, I believe in the law. I believe in a justice system. Um, and I think that that person should be tried and convicted or let free, whatever the situation is. Um, but everyone should have, just like for us, it should be fair, um, and and like I said, guilty until proven innocent. Was this def was it defending itself? Was this malicious? We need to find out. I, I I want to give the justice system the just do first. Then after that, we move on to see 
what we need to do in the future when something like this happens again. And the last one is list uh, any other propositions regarding policing that you will fight for. I am going to uh, fight for um, trying to recruit more minority to be into law enforcement, um, just as I would like for them to do more mental health in the application process when you're recruiting. I wanna know where, what the background is of these police officers and what their mental state is. Uh, same as for ex-military to come out I know if they've been in war that they're going to have some mental instability and I want them to go through the same process when they become police officers as well. Thank you very much. Um, so the next question is more of like a personal history one. Uh, who did you support in the uh, 2020 Democratic Party presidential primary uh, this year and why? Uh, and then when did you publicly uh, support them? Well, with my candidate that I wanted, I, I, I the only time I publicly su was supporting him was with my wife and a couple of friends. It would have been Cory Booker. I had liked a lot of his stance. He was young, energetic. Uh, I believe that he would have been a great candidate. However, it just seemed like in the uh, debates, he just didn't get enough time to really present himself. And listen to him to in different aspects of uh, news rounds of interviews and everything. I thought he was wonderful. So now with Biden, Biden running and supporting him, I hope that if Biden wins, I hope that Biden hires him in some capacity because he brings a lot of great perspective and he brings a lot of energy and. Um, charisma and he got a lot of veteran leadership in there and he would be a great asset to the White House. You already know, answered a bit of this before, um, but you can go over it again. What is your analysis of the Eves administration handling of the COVID-19 crisis in Wisconsin, including its handling of the processes leading up to the April 7th election? And the same question, uh, what's your analysis of what the, uh, of the state legislature's action? You know, I, um, I really have to commend Tony Evers, uh, and I'm gonna say any governor in this time, the handling of COVID-19, the way they came in, because this has never been happening. So here we are at ground zero, everything he's done or tried to do, I believe has been positive. I believe that as you grow into this, you're learning, writing things down, um, putting notes and, and everything to be able to be ready for policies because we may go through a pandemic again in the future. And this here is a learning, this has been a learning opportunity. As far as leading up to the uh, April 7th elections, I believe that he had handled it pretty well. However, he was getting attacked by the GOP. And um, then the GOP, because he wanted to expand, he wanted to extend it out to see if we can get the COVID-19 down, the numbers down. However, the GOP wanted to do the election. It happened. Uh, now they got upset about it. And it's like, well, you can't, have it both ways. You you decided to go against Tony Evers and whatever reason you did that, your the way you did it failed. And now you wanted to go to the Supreme Court, which I that there was just that was awful. And so I believe that Governor Evers has handled it this crisis well. And I believe that um continued support I would continue to support him and his staff uh, to make Wisconsin safe and get these numbers down so we can get back to where we need to be.
Thank you very much. Um, so the next one, uh, taking a little bit of a turn. Um, are you supportive of the uh, BDS, which is the Boycott Divestment Sanctions Movement? Yes. Uh, as a veteran, this is what we we fought for for this country is your freedom of speech. That I mean, that's basically what it is. Um, you have the right to do any movement as you know, as long as it is not hurting anyone. You have the right to free speech to march to do what you need to do in protest. And I firmly believe in that. And it's nice to see young people out there protesting for their rights, to, to the freedom as this country gives. So you can do and make it better for your life. I believe that this is, is, is necessary and I'm firmly behind and support BDS. Um, this will be, actually, you, 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 may have, you may have answered this. You already addressed the, uh, the First <laughs> okay. Amendment issues around it, but I'll ask, I'll ask it again anyway, just in case you have anything to add. Um, do you believe that protesting is a form of speech and therefore the right to do so, yes. including uh, BDS and the anti-pipeline movements, which have had laws passed against in Wisconsin? Um, peaceful. Should, no. should those not be punished? No, it shouldn't. As long as it's peaceful, it should not be punished. This is your right. I fought for this, um, as well as other veterans and active military staff. The country, this is what movements are. Peaceful protesting ever since Martin Luther King. Um, this should not be punished in any way. As long as it's peaceful, no one's getting hurt. This is what needs that. Uh, this is what we're built on. And I firmly, um, protect those rights. So thank you very much. Uh, so the next uh, two questions are gonna be more um, uh, technical questions about the campaign. Um, uh, so number 15, uh, list any unions that have uh, endorsed in this race and uh, which labor endorsements are you uh, actively seeking? I haven't, I've answered a lot of questions with a lot of uh, endorsements. Uh, however, I haven't received any endorsements. Um, again, I like the uh, elect the, the campaign that I'm running. The people are engineering, the volunteers that I have are engineering uh, my campaign. 25 here, 50 here. Um, and this is a this is a grassroots. Uh, I'm I'm new to this. I don't have no huge endorsements that I am aware of that has come in anything. Um, and I, I'm I'm liking my campaign. It's it's nice. Although COVID nineteen has stopped a lot, I protect myself. People like to talk to me. I meet them. Stand at six feet apart. My voice carries, and I talk with people. And um, so I don't have that much money, but I have my, I have the people. And that's what gets you in office is the people the the voting, they vote and they make their, they, they make their stands very clear. And this has been a great campaign so far, even in this pandemic, I think I'm running a great campaign. Uh, regarding fundraising, uh, how much, uh, there's a multiple, par multiple parts here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's in chat if you, if you miss some of them. Um, regarding fundraising, how much have you raised for this race to date? Uh, who are your top three donors? Uh, what percentage of your total is from those top donors? And how much is strictly from small individual donors of less than $50? And if this is not your first election, please answer this question regarding your last election uh, as well. Well, in this, um, in, in, in this capacity, running for states, and this is my first, um, I, I cannot count uh, running as a school board member because that was very low. Uh, but at this point in time, I know July 15th, um, I will release um, my funding 
And so to date, I believe it's about 2,800. Um, I don't major donors. Everyone's individual. 2550 here. I think my mother and my uncle maybe gave me a hundred. <laughs> Cause they look because you know they love me. <laughs> but besides that, uh it's been grassroots uh visiting and I just see through Act Blue or I see through checks that come in the mail. Um and so my like I said, my report to come out July. 15 because I'm still entering uh, those things and then that will be out there um, soon. Uh, thank you. Um, so do you support uh, legalization of uh, recreational cannabis, including the expungement of all uh, previous cannabis related charges and the release of um, all those currently serving time for uh, such charges? That's a great question. Um, cannabis, absolutely. Um, I know that legalizing cannabis will stimulate our economy here in Wisconsin. Um, what I would love, love to do also is to release people who may have got caught with it. They shouldn't be serving on three to five years. Um, they, it, it's not fair. Um, and I think, personally, I think that as a black man, black, young black men have been getting arrested for having marijuana, uh, and not getting treated the way that's um, in the judicial system and getting put in uh, jail for um, these kind of low, you know, low risk um, offenses. But I believe with legalizing, I believe that it will strengthen our state. I think that it will strengthen our educational system with funds um, receiving the funds from the sales, uh, I think it would actually lower property taxes. Um, I believe that um, money can go to helping with mental health issues. There's so, the, there's so many options out there that I believe that cannabis will bring to this state. And to have both parties working and agreeing on policies and how to finance all of the um, public, nonprofits, small businesses, agricultural, um, and getting out of this pandemic because we really do need some extra money here right now to help out our state. I think that uh, this should be a no brainer. And as a state senator, I will fight and I will try to get uh, a work cross party lines to get this done. Uh, do you have uh, another uh, election related question? And it's the last one as well. Um, do you have paid staff or consultants working on your campaign? And if so, what percentage of your campaign funding goes to paid staff or consultants? Team McKinney right now consists of my wife and I. And my, my son, who's 10, he's my security. And my daughter is somewhat of my webmaster. <laughs> so Team McKinney, this is the staff here. I have a lot of volunteers in Sun Prairie, Madison, Cottage Grove, Monona, McFarland, and Stoughton. And these are for the 25 years since uh, being uh, separated out of the military, I have built positive relationships with so many people around. Uh, a lot of my former students are the ones that are helping me, uh, helping volunteer. So I do not have any paid staff. It's just the McKinney family and all the volunteers that's out here in the community 
and I thank them so much for just believing in me and um, following me and say that I would probably make a great senator and it feels great coming from my heart that to hear that and again uh, win or lose um, this was a great experience uh, I see there's a lot of work to be done but I know that I put my I put my foot in anything out there that I need to do and to get the job done. So I'm thanking my family and all my volunteers and, and family.